<laughs> yeah, it's me again. So check it out. This is the screencast for lecture eight, semester two. The subject of this screencast is cynicism. Cynicism as a philosophy, cynicism as a practice. And we'll be looking at the impact of cynicism on our attitudes towards institutions and crucially business. The first section of this lecture looks at definitions or a key definition of what we mean by cynicism. Crucially, it's about questioning the motives that lie behind actions or behaviour or attitudes, whatever. And from there we think about the life of Diogenes of Sinope, who is seen as the founder of the cynicism school in ancient Athens. The thing is, the word cynic, cynicism, goes back to ancient Greece and is associated with the life and behaviour of Diogenes, who never wrote a thing, but what we know about him was passed on second hand and um, written about by followers and admirers. And so it's very hard to distinguish between fact and fiction. But have a look, because this is the foundations of uh, cynicism as a uh, philosophy. In other words, as an approach to life informed by ethical concerns about the human condition and where society is going. So Diogenes took a term of abuse that was levelled at him, you dog, and used it as a form of empowerment and critique. And we have contemporary examples of Diogenes' use of language of abuse as a form of empowerment. Gang, now where were we before I was so rudely interrupted? You were like uh, cleaning us out. Well, you can make it back at bingo. Hey, Dibble, what's all the racket about? For the author of this book, Cutler, Cynicism from Diogenes to Dilbert, the spirit of Diogenes still lives on today, and the way it works and influences society is, in the main, through popular culture and we'll be looking at some examples in the next section. So we saw how Diogenes used shock theatre, for want of a better term, to achieve certain ethical and political ends. This use of shock theatre continues to this very day, even though those using it are not aware of Diogenes. Here are some examples. Warning, there is some adult content in what follows.
In 1990, two rap stars, MC Hammer and Vanilla Ice, had outsold everybody else in the music business. Rap seemed to be following in rock and roll's footsteps, beginning as a black ghetto music and becoming pop. But in Miami, Florida, a rap scene was emerging that was far from pop oriented. Well, at first we were doing shows with just us, just the guys. And then the idea came, the idea came up, let's put some, let's involve some hoes. And when we started, when we involved the bitches, it just, it just elevated our show. And we just put us with some girls in a club with some girls half naked. Just get some bitches in a club, put us some G-strings on, let them do their thing. It was the two live crew's raunchy stage act that soon made them the most talked about group in Miami. In the record, as nasty as I want to be, there was 226 uses of the F word. 117 explicit terms for the male and female genitalia. 87 descriptions of oral sex. 163 uses of the word bitch. 15 uses of hoe. Which is the slang word for whore. Okay, what is that? Hoe. Which is a slang word for whore. 81 uses of the uh, vulgarity S dash dash T. It's four descriptions of group sex. And one reference to incest. And over a dozen illustrations of violent sex. medical problems this year. I'm now so old that my pussy is haunted. <laughs> Things the Queen would never say in a Christmas special and one comedian said, I'm now so old my pussy is haunted. Is that a risk worth taking? Well, I is think, that uh, editorially? Uh, no. I'm now lovely. so old my pussy is haunted. Well, this is about the monarch. Emily. <laughs> There's so much happening in the news, it's very hard to keep track of things. Like there's been serious allegations in the news of child abuse in Cleveland. Serious allegations of child abuse in Cleveland. Now to my mind there's only one way to find out whether it's true or not. And that is to call in Jimmy Savile. I mean what you can't afford to fuck about? Bring in an expert. Am I right? That's why he does all the fucking charity work. It's to gain public sympathy for when this fucking case comes up. I've always known that. Aye, 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 you might be able to fool you, not fucking me, I'll tell you that. This is fucking fool this big nosed Jewish bastard over here, I'll tell you that. I've always thought if you could take the action of a wank and turn it into a voice, you'd get Jimmy Savile, wouldn't you? No, 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 lovely, lovely, lovely. Oh, 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 lovely, young Billy. These are examples of what, um, I'll show you. What Jones et al., Jones, Parker, and Ten Boss would call kinicism over cynicism. I suppose a form of cynicism that has a ethical and political concern to actually address the problems in society, whereas a cynic leaves the world unchanged. Find it on page 125 of the seminar free reading handout. Have a look. Let me read. 